Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how you can build this exact design system in Figma. We're gonna go over how you can build your own typography scale like this, your own color scale from the lightest green all the way to the darkest, and we can do this with any color, obviously. And we're also gonna show how you can do some very basic button components like this so that you just have some simple buttons that you can use over and over in your file. Now, this is gonna be one of the episodes in my technical execution module from my course. So this is like a little preview of that but I just want to give it to you guys for free because I think that it's something so, so essential that you need. But if you guys do want to check out this course that I'm creating, the pre-sale is live. I'm going to leave the link into the description. You're going to learn how to manage and deal with clients from the very start to the very end. So anyways, let's get into the actual meat and potatoes of the video. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open a brand new Figma file and we're just going to type in something like hello. Okay, this is gonna be one of the most important parts. We wanna make sure that the weight of the class is gonna be on regular and then the size on 16. And there's gonna be a couple of plugins in Figma that you're gonna to need to use to be able to build this kind of system. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So I'm gonna go into the plugins here and I'm gonna look for type scales. This one with the kind of triangle gradient background. I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna open up this window for us. So this already kind of does all the work for us, which is fantastic. But you can see that if we click on our base text here, we'll see why we did that. 16 is gonna be the text base that we want to work with. Now this is gonna be because one REM is usually the root element of most browsers. So in this case, we wanna make sure that it's gonna be 16 pixels. Now here we can negotiate with this plugin and we can say how many scales we wanna go up and how many scales we wanna go down. What that means is from our base component here, from this kind of body text that we're gonna be starting with, we can actually say, okay, I'm actually gonna need Need one more scale below it as kind of like a, like a caption text or maybe something even smaller than that. So we need a two or three or four or how many ever you need. And it automatically creates the scale for you based on this scale metric here. Now this scale metric, we can either drag it up or down, but you can see that if we use a certain type of scale, it's just gonna look kind of silly. So I think it's better just to stick with the major third or 1.25, that's the one that I like to use. And sometimes I like to go a little bit bigger, like the, no, not perfect fourth. Let's see which other ones we got. Okay, yeah, so I like to have the H1 be 80 pixels or five REMs. For me, this is just a stylistic choice, but anyways, okay, let's bring the scale back down to maybe one or two. That way we have a 12 pixel, okay, so I think we only need one. We have a 12 pixel, text size for captions and for all that stuff. And then on the larger size, we have 80 pixels for our H1, which is fantastic. We can also take a look at the line height. So usually inside of Webflow, we can actually see the height that we have in our project. Oh, let's go ahead and undo the mess I just made here. So in this case, we see 1.5. So if we wanna go ahead and just copy that, we can do 1.5. We can see that the height of the text is gonna be adjusted. So we can go ahead and click generate and it'll create this scale for us. Now we did use the word hello. So maybe let's use something else. So maybe the small brown fox jumps over the, I don't know, the rest of the, how it goes. But anyways, let's just make sure that it all looks the way we need it. So let's go 1.5 scale. Let's go to the golden ratio and we can scale down one just in case. All right, so now that gives us a better kind of preview of what this text is actually gonna look like. Now I did this with enter, but you can obviously do this with any type of font that you want. So in this case, if I wanna go ahead and change it to maybe Aeonic, which is kind of a, a new and, and cool thing. We can go ahead and generate. We can see that just as fast as it did the other one, it'll do this one as well. So yeah, you can pretty much do this with any font of your choosing, but I just pick Enter because it's one of the most accessible on Google fonts. So from here, what do you do to actually use this? Because inside of our local styles, we don't have anything. So if we wanna go ahead and actually reuse it like we have here, we need to create a style for this or a variable inside of Webflow. So let's go ahead and click on our text layer. We click the four dots here and we can name this H1. We can add a little description. So the main H1 for the site, but I don't think we really need to show any more options. Just double check that this is all good to go. 
and we go ahead and create the style. So now when we go into something like tilebit.io, which is my component library, and I'm just grabbing this here, you can use anything you want, but we can go ahead here and make sure that this H1 matches the one that we need it. Now, obviously this looks a little bit big, maybe it's not the right size. So let's go ahead and get a text center, because if we're using 80 pixels, for that that size of an H1. Maybe we want it to be the dominant element in the page. So let's go ahead and just test it with this instead. And we can maybe make this a little bit wider. Okay. Now I do like that, but I don't like the way, for example, that this line height is treating us. So we can actually reduce that right in the text style. We can maybe make that 120. We can see how easy it is to just do that. Now let's go ahead and just make all of these styles for all the classes. So H2, make a new one. H3, make another new one, H4. And let's keep an eye out on our base here. We can call this one H5. Last one, now this can either be an H6 or a second size body text. Now I'm gonna actually call this large body. This can be our regular body. So what we're gonna use in paragraphs and stuff like that. And then this can be what we use, for example, in our let me get rid of this layout grid. And then this can be, for example, our large body, right? So it can take up more space. All right. And then for buttons and stuff like that, we can use the regular body. That makes more sense to me. All right. And then last is going to be this caption. But captions sometimes have different styles, right? If we have, if we take a look at some of these sections and we go for maybe type in tag, if I go ahead and grab this, or if I just open it up, we'll see that we have a tagline here. And in this case, it's going to be in all caps. So we can change the way that the style actually looks before we add that in. So I'm just gonna make sure that the case is all in uppercase and we can actually add in a little bit, maybe not that much of spacing between the letters. And then we can just call this caption or tag or something like that. So now if we go ahead and copy this and put it into Figma, if we get rid of these two, all right get rid of that layout grid, we can now start to connect all of our text styles to the correct one. So what this allows us to do is that if we have any changes that we need to make to a massive design, we can simply do it inside of the local styles. For example, here, let's say for the H1, I actually want it to be this because I've seen Figma use it previously and I think it looks really cool. So we can go ahead and do that and we can say that we can change the way that it looks on all the different pages, which is fantastic. We don't need to go in one by one and changing everything. And when you're working with the client, this is going to be super important because they might say, uh, actually, this caption looks a little bit small. Can we make it bigger? And you can be like, yeah, sure. Why not? So you make it 16 because why not? And you can see that it looks a little bit weird, but hey, that's what the client wants, right? <laughs> but anyways, we can go ahead and change this to be a large body as well. And then these text placeholders here can be our regular body, or we can actually make a caption, see how that looks. We're going for kind of like a brutalist design, I'm guessing here. Okay, so this looks cool, but what is going on with these color? It's looking a little bit bland, right? We only have white and black. So let's go ahead and show you how we can do this color scale. Now there's a lot of different color scales online. Like for example, you can go colordesigner.io. We can just open it up. We can say we can pick literally anything and create an entire color library. We can go to coolers and we can generate anything we want just by clicking the space bar. But this doesn't allow us to create the color scale that we usually need in UI UX web design projects. So just for the sake of an example, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this Columbia blue as our main color, right? Say that we want this color and right now it's taking that caption, say that I want this color to be kind of our, our main style, right? We want to go for something like a baby blue. All right. So let's go ahead and just make a square that has this color. Get rid of that. I'm just call this main square. Make sure that we are not hooligans and we're actually lining up our things. All right. So now we need to do is go into the plugins area again and look for this color generator, foundation color generator. It's gonna open that up. We can go ahead and close that, move that to the side. And we can see that we now have this panel open. It's gonna give us different options for different color profiles. All you really need to use, in my opinion, is gonna be this material one, which is created by Google. So that kind of goes to show how well made it is. It also gives you the different contrast ratios between each color. And right now, all we need to do is go ahead and just pick this blue that we've got going on here. Or if we really wanna be 
specific, we can just type that in. So you'll see that it'll generate this color scale for us from blue 50 all the way to blue 900. And if we wanted to, we can either do two things. Number one is we can generate tokens, which allows us to paste it directly if we're doing custom code, or we can generate a color palette. Now the color palette is gonna kind of import all these styles into Figma. So let's go ahead and do that. But first we need to create a color style. Now color style is gonna do the same thing that we did here for the text styles, but with colors so that we can actually reuse them as much as we want. So let's get and do that, create styles, we can see that very quickly, it just created these 10 different style for us. So we got blue 50 all the way to blue 900. I'm also gonna generate the palette so we can just see it here. And the annoying thing about this is that it won't actually create the thing with the thing. So we need to go ahead and actually reconnect the blue 50 to the blue 50 on these styles. So blue 100, and it'll just take a second, but blue 200, blue 300. All right, so now we have all the colors matching with the actual color style. And here we have, let me actually just get rid of this folder. Okay, we can probably get rid of that as well. I'm just gonna select all of them and just drag them out because we don't really need a folder. So we can see that we have the H1 all the way down to the caption. And then we also have the blue from 50 all the way to 900. So now we have the following. If we use this hero header as an example, we can go ahead and quickly change colors as much as we want, and it'll still be within the same color scale. So things are gonna look like they actually belong there. So in this case, we can use blue 100, blue 900 if we wanted to. Let me just put this back into enter because this looks a little bit silly and get rid of the caption here, all right. And then maybe the text in this case should be a little bit lighter. So we're gonna go into the fill and we're gonna pick blue 50. Now you'll see that we're not using a flat basic white here. We're using a super, super, super light blue that go into the properties. You'll see that it is literally almost as if we're like whispering for the blue to appear, but it's there. You know, it, we can see that it's actually blue, which is fantastic. Another way to do this is if we select the entire section and we go into the selection of colors, we'll see that there's maybe this white here that for some reason is appearing. We can go ahead and just select it by the four dots and click on blue again. And now we can see if we select all the colors, there shouldn't be anything else here. Okay, so a couple of these are being integrated from tile bit. So we can go ahead and just change that. So cool gray 100, we'll just make that blue 100. We can see that we're using the same number. So 100 from gray to 100 to blue. And that kind of helps us match different website styles. So if you're working with a lot of people and you have an entire project from 50 to 900, you can say, hey, you actually only need to use the 300 for that or the 600 for that, because that's the main color that we're using. You know, it's, this is a way to communicate the different color styles that you need. So in this case, let's go ahead and select these colors and from cool gray 900, we can make it blue 900. We can see that there's an issue here because it is blending in. So instead of blue 900, let's make the background here blue 700 perhaps. All right, so I'm just gonna finish doing this for all the cool grays that we've got here. So 400 and then 300, so we can match all the different colors that we need. And placeholder, I'm actually gonna make this a little bit darker. So just go bit by bit. All right, so now we've got a hero header with all the correct color styles, all the correct text styles as well. Nothing is kind of out of whack. So now what we can do is we can easily send this to clients that have a large team and we can show them that we have number one, a text scale that actually makes sense in terms of H1 all the way down to a smaller tagline or caption and also a color scale. Now, last thing that we need to do here is gonna be to create these buttons. Now I've done tutorials on how to create components before, so I'm not gonna go mega, mega deep into it. But anyways, let's just go ahead and create a button here. Make sure that it is maybe a regular body, okay? And I'm gonna click Shift and A to create this button. And I like to do this with 16 and 16, just to see what we're working with for now. We can always change it. Or actually, I'm being silly. Let me just grab this holding option just to drag a new button. All right, that way we don't need to remake. So now that we've got this button going on here, we have a 24 and 12 blue 900 as the background. So all I need to do is to click on this button here called create a component. And then also if you wanted to, we can go ahead and create a variant. So this variant, we can go ahead and select both of them. And this can be called state. This top one can be default. And then this one can be hover, just like that. We can add in a very simple prototype animation here. So on hover, instead of on click, we can do while hovering, change to state hover. All right, so now if we actually wanna preview this, let me just drag this primary button in here, get rid of the old one, and we can go into the preview here. All right, we can actually maybe change the color. That would help. 
from just that. Okay, so now we can see that that very simple animation is working, but I think in terms of the logic, the lighter one should be the primary. Now the text here is gonna be a little bit weird, but bear with me here. So we can see in this case, we have the text that's changing, but it's doing it instantly. So how can we do this to be a little bit smarter? So we can do either dissolve or smart animate. You can do ease out. And now we have this smooth button transition. Now these color scales are looking a little bit too similar to each other, but remember you can do this with absolutely anything. This makes a lot more sense. If we go ahead and preview this, which is the page that I did for the course, so that we have a nice transition there with a nice hover. So that pretty much covers it for this very simple type scale, color scale, and component tutorial. This allows you to get 80% of the way there with a web design project in terms of the components that you need to start building. Now, when it comes to actually having the layouts to be able to use these components over and over, I have a component library called tilebit.io. If you're interested, I'm gonna leave the link in the description as always to go ahead and check out these layouts that you can use over and over and over. Anyways, that kind of covers it. If you guys have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna reply to every single one of you. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.